Hello, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danny, and I'm so excited to be talking to you guys today about recovering your period without a focus on weight gain. So, I definitely know my stuff, you know, I am a certified fertility awareness practitioner, I'm a certified nutrition counselor, and along with my business partner, I run the holistic HA practitioner certification, teaching other women to work with women with HA. So I've worked directly with a lot of women and by proxy with a lot of women. And I can tell you right now that it's absolutely possible to get your period back without focusing on your weight gain. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some populations where we do have to focus on weight gain for various reasons. And I'm gonna get into that. But for now, um, let's start with the average person recovering their menstrual cycle without a focus on weight gain. Now, some people are gonna be really pumped about this topic, it's, you know, super interesting to them. And some people are gonna be like, well, this is not helpful. So I wanna be really clear that the words matter here. I'm not saying getting your period back and avoiding weight gain. I'm not saying getting your period back without weight gain. I'm not saying getting your period back and losing weight. I'm saying without focusing on weight gain as the main show. You know, does that sometimes mean you can get your period back without as much weight gain as perhaps if you had gone a different route um, or focused on weight gain? Yeah, it, it can mean that, but like we don't know what that ultimate alternate timeline looked like so you know it's kind of impossible to tell but the truth is like I don't think I've really ever worked on getting someone's weight up for the purpose of recovery of their menstrual cycle again I'm going to get into reasons why we have worked on that but for the initial getting their period back weight gain can be a byproduct or a symptom of refeeding and re-nourishing yourself. This means, although you might not have a particular number on the scale, you're actively eating to try and get to and you're weighing yourself every day to see if you've gotten an ounce closer to that body weight, that's not, that's just not what we do. What we really do is focus on no more dieting, no more restriction, and bringing in, like filling in nutritional gaps both from a energy calories overall to a um, micro and macronutrient, you know, oh, you don't eat any protein, let's fill you up with protein. You don't eat any carbs, let's fill in those carbs. To bring a blood sugar balance, to bring a, a dump of minerals into someone's body, to allow their body to better um, absorb minerals and to therefore better handle stress, which therefore or improves their ability to maintain a healthy cortisol level and it, it's this domino effect right and we can achieve hormonal happiness by following that route versus just trying to eat enough that we gain so much weight and hope that the body just by the fact that you're throwing everything at the wall hoping that the body figures out it has what it needs, okay? So we basically, we can take a bit more of a narrowed approach by seeing specifically what are you restricting from, what are you actually in need of, and then filling those gaps versus just having you eat as much as you can of anything and everything, which is potentially even more calories than you originally needed. Both options are great. Both options can get you to a menstrual cycle recovery. It's just about your preference. I love both options. And if it weren't for option number one, you know, a lot of people wouldn't have healed their relationship with um, foods that they've once restricted or just wouldn't have recovered as quickly or wouldn't have gotten pregnant as quickly. And if it weren't for the option with the more narrowed approach where there's an individualized components and you're understanding what your nutritional gaps are, what your exercise over exercising looks like and what your unique stresses are. If it weren't for that, there are some people that would not embark on this journey at all, including myself. I wouldn't be doing it that way like there are people who are like it's just a fundamental no for me i'm just gonna stick with my amenorrhea or my poor performing hormones because i just cannot even consider going down that route you know what i mean so both are really important and by not focusing on weight gain 
and by focusing on all of the stresses and the deficiencies and the reintroduction of things that were once restricted, you know, as, as a mental and emotional and just a nutritional thing versus just a weight gain thing, you know, we can make a lot more progress for a lot of people. So by focusing on weight gain and eating and eating and eating for weight gain, you know, oftentimes for some people, this is a great way to just exposure therapy their way out of their fear of restriction. But for many other people, that's not going to cut it. And so we have to take more of an entire lifestyle restructuring method to it. I might be rambling a little bit, but to really sum it up, I'm just trying to say that you can not ever look on the scale. You can not worry about your weight gain so long as you are eating enough, resting enough. How much you weigh may have nothing to do with this. And the way that you can kind of know, well, Danny, if I do it that way and I'm not gaining weight and stuff, like what other metric might I have? for knowing whether or not I'm getting closer and making progress. Great question. And I've said it once, and I'll say it a million times. You need to be aware of the menstrual cycle parameters and you need to be tracking your temperatures and your cervical mucus and being on top of those tangible, objective measures to say, hey, yes, this is working or not. You know, that we have, every one of our clients has to do that so that we can know whether or not we're sending them on the right track or we need to push them harder. You know, that's just, it's just the best way. But if you don't want to do that, you know, then yeah, you may have to be more patient um, and understanding that, you know, you may still have some biases and some restriction that you're bringing in. Whereas if you do the like all in method where you just eat, eat, eat and try to gain some weight, you kind of do know whether or not you're getting closer and making progress. So that's one of those benefits, you know what I mean? Um, okay. So just don't look at your weight. Don't make that a part of the, um, the, the formula. Um, reasons we might actually look at someone's weight though are conception goals sometimes or if cycle parameters are not looking good so we're going to try and get someone's period back that's step one but step two is is your follicular phase your ovulation your luteal phase and your bleed are they beautiful are they making make are they looking good and if we cannot get your luteal phase up for example past a certain point or if your ovulation is really poor or if your temperatures just are not coming up past a certain point okay now we know that weight gain is a factor so well, it might be a factor. Again, we're going to look at the person. How tall are they? How lean are they? What's their history with weight loss relative to themselves versus how they compare to other people? And do we think that with that information, um, we need them to gain some weight? And typically, if someone's going to be like under 20, maybe even under 22% body fat, for example, um, there's a higher chance we're going to say, let's see if some weight gain helps us with this progesterone. We're going to double down on that strategy if conception is their goal and they're trying to get pregnant every month and they say they have a ovulation on day 25 every month and they have a light bleed and their temperatures are like 98, you know, like they're just high enough, but their luteal phase is 10 days, right? 10 or 11 days. Some people would be like, that's ideal. Like I'm in the parameters. But if your cycle's only 10 or 11 days, I'm already kind of like, you're just scraping in right now if you're trying to get pregnant and it's 10 or 11 days and you're not getting pregnant i now know that it's not enough so if we feel that you're checking all the boxes with stress you're eating really well you're not feeling restricted you know like those things are all in check but you're super lean i'm gonna say hey let's just gain a couple pounds and see if that makes conception easier because it really does you know there are important functions of body fat, right? So do not get it twisted that you should be able to find a way to be crazy lean and maintain a super healthy menstrual cycle. It's not reality for the vast majority of people. Your body fat is an organ. It has really essential roles in the communication and transportation of messaging signals of hormones. So in many ways, if you don't have enough, 
that could really make a lot of sense as to why your hormonal profile is down, as to why your overall basal body temperature is down. So we now have the evidence to suggest that it might help for you to gain weight and I'm gonna recommend that for a client and it works every time. So to really zoom out for a second and put this into a, a practical implementable plan for you. If you're still trying to recover, no period whatsoever, cool. Um, just start with not worrying about your weight, but worrying about your nutritional gaps, your energy deficit, focus on that. And if you gain weight, that's what your body needed and you need to listen and trust that that's what it needed. But you don't have to make it your main priority to gain weight, right? Now, if your menstrual cycle parameters are looking good, and I talk about this in a lot of other videos, and I have a course that teaches this, I'm um, called Fertility Awareness for AJers. Um, in, on our website, you can find it in the resource store. If all of your parameters look good, okay, cool. Even if they look like just borderline good, you know, that's better than a lot of women. Would it be better for you to strive for optimization? Yes, but don't stress yourself on it. Anyways, um, if they look good, great. If they don't look good and you know you're doing all the things, the one thing you might be doing is not allowing yourself to gain weight. So maybe a pound, it could be a pound, it could be half a pound. I'm telling you, sometimes these things make a difference. Trust that, lean into more food, see if you gain weight and if your cycle parameters improve, right? Sometimes you feel like you're leaning all the way into weight gain, but you're not. So just lean harder into food. Well, you feel like you're leaning into eating more, but you're not. So lean into that more and see if that helps. And if that results in weight gain, it meant that you needed more body fat. And then lastly, if you're trying to get pregnant and your cycle parameters look good, or they're a little bit, they're just a little bit off and you're just not getting pregnant, body fat at that time, we're gonna say, hey, let's get you a pound or two up, especially if you're in those low 20s. Um, or even lower than that. And I know that can be hard to hear for some people, uh, and it's so much more nuanced, it's really hard to do in a video, but I hope this was helpful. If this has provided more confusion for you, please comment below and I will try to do a better video that is more explanatory, but I've really tried to just give you my thought process and to how we approach this with clients as succinctly as possible. And if this, kind of thing is interesting to you and you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I would love a little bit more um, support or help in this, we're doing um, a webinar. So, gosh, I don't have the date yet, guys. I think it's going to be on um, June 13th. So, yes, Tuesday, June 13th, and go to um, the hasociety.com forward slash webinar, and we're going to do a talk about the pillars of restoring. So restoring your calories, restoring your nutrient stores, restoring your homeo, um, hormone homeostasis, restoring ovulation and restoring progesterone. So these are all of the steps that are most important for getting your entire menstrual cycle back. Now, I'm gonna leave this video up. So if you are watching this video and this webinar is no longer on, you can still go to the hasociety.com forward slash restore and learn about all of our products there that take you through this. But if you're watching this live, we're gonna go through all of that. I'm gonna teach it to you live um, and give you some case studies too, to show you some people who went from HA to pregnancy and like the different strategies we had to take with each of those people. So I highly recommend you join us for that on the 13th of June. We'll see you guys next week. And if you have any questions that you want to submit as a Q&A or any topics you'd love us to cover, please let me know in the comments. I love doing Q&A stuff. And please like and subscribe to this channel if it was helpful because when you subscribe, I'm able to keep providing all of this type of information for free. So it's a super easy way to support us. And so I appreciate that. Okay, guys. See you next time.